Can I? I can get my heart here. Can you, how do you deal with, or can you help a person, or can you change where a person with borderline personality disorder is if they're rejecting you, or if they're ghosting you, or if they're just actively, I don't know, uh, yeah, I guess rejecting you or pulling away from you. Can you do anything about that to change where they're at to get them to understand what's happening or to get them to come back and talk to you or to stop acting out, etc. What can you do when a person with BPD that you love and care about is, or maybe it's an ex and even it's a Hoover and an on and off again situation. What can, is there anything you can really do that's really effective in changing where they are emotionally? I've seen lots of things, you know, written about online in answer to a similar question. And really they say, well, you know, what, what, what you could do. And I, and I've had clients tell me they've tried this is you, you can sort of hang back and be more aloof and sort of give them this feeling or actually say outright that you're going to leave them. So you can threaten abandonment. We'll get the devaluing, rejecting person with BPD to snap out of that and, and, and fear your abandonment. And then they'll come back and talk to you, or then they will come back from maybe a discard, maybe they'll Hoover, maybe they'll answer your reverse Hoover. But does that really work? I would think most of the time, based on all my experience and expertise, no. And if it does work temporarily, it's not likely to work more than the odd time, if even that. And so when a person with BPD has been triggered, is rejecting you, is want, you know, distancing, wanting, um, well, has already been in it close enough to now be feeling engulfment and struggling away from that. So they're pushing you away. They're in the avoidance part of approach avoidance. They're in the push part of push pull. It's not, it, it, it's overly simplistic to think and it can be so heart-wrenching and difficult and make things worse to try to think that you could then threaten abandonment, whether actually verbally or through your actions or by withdrawing, being aloof, taking off for a while, whatever the case, and that then they're just going to flip into fear of abandonment, get out of that devaluing engulfment struggle and approach you all of a sudden. In fact, that can backfire so, so badly in so many ways for an untold myriad of reasons, not the least of which is just the adverse childhood experience people with BPD have had, 75% at least have been diagnosed with it, or who may well meet the criteria and would get a diagnosis if they get assessed. It, it, it's too, it, it's re-triggering them while they're triggered. If you can even get in touch with them, if they're rejecting you or ghosting you, or they've just taken off on you, them, or, or they're just uh, maybe a quiet borderline who's in, still in the same house with you or not, but like won't answer your texts or won't um, talk to you. To threaten abandonment when they're already triggered at the opposite end of approach avoidance isn't going to make them want to approach because they're still engulfed uh, or feeling the engulfment of having been too close. And that's why they're rejecting and devaluing. So see, these are the cycles, you know, that are the approach avoidance conflict that people with BPD have. And they're there for really entrenched reasons of adverse child experience and arrested emotional development by the age of two, as I'm often saying. So this notion that you can just do the opposite. So what if the person with BPD is in a really, like they've ghosted you or, you know, they've rejected you. And maybe if, if you don't, if you live together, maybe you don't see them, maybe you just get contempt and these really strong negative feelings across the room, but they're not engaging with you. They want to stay away from you, that kind of rejection or they rejected you outright, ghosted and left a relationship or moved out suddenly. Or if you don't live together and you know, you rely on 
getting together or communicating on a text or, you know, voicemail or what have you. You try that and they won't answer. So they have been triggered to fear of abandonment and they're in the avoidance of everything. And they're not, wait a minute, no, I got that backwards. If they're approaching you now after ghosting you or after um, rejecting you in any way, if, if, if you think that you're being amenable to that without things being worked out, which people in the act of throes of BPD notoriously do not want to talk about or will dissociatively have not really remembered accurately or will say outright that they don't remember, which is in most cases not really actually the total truth, but it might be just their way, well, it's often their way of avoiding personal responsibility so when they're in that stage or side of the cycle, can you do anything to change where they're at with that? So now they're really approaching. Maybe they ghosted you. It's on and off again. You've taken them back before, maybe multiple times, or you're still with them, but like you're just, you're feeling too hurt still. You don't know what's going on. So even when a person with BPD might be back in that approach, phase you're not ready and you want to talk about it you're like you're hurt and they come back like nothing ever happened whether it's coming back from another room hours later driving back to the house hours later or texting you a day or two or weeks or hours later. it depends but no there isn't anything you can do on either side of the approach avoidance conflict the triggers and how they will react to you either coming coming back towards you in a hoover or if you're still sort of in a relationship it's on again then okay but then it's going to be off again and if you don't get to talk about it and they don't understand it okay people want the relationship to work out people can feel relieved when they come back you could welcome them back with open arms but this is how loss of self happens often for people in increments because things aren't dealt with and you've been really hurt they've been triggered they are likely triggered when they're triggered they're what they're feeling and what they're defending against and when they reject you etc or when they're coming you know begging and like but i need you and but i can't do this by myself and what about this and what about that either side of that split it's not wise to for lack of a better way to put it play around or try to control that by giving the opposite reaction and so in the case of approaching again it's difficult for people because they want these people to come back definitely right but the thing is should sh is it does that sound if you think about it for a bit it's very compelling emotionally but but does it sound healthy for you because most people and i know most clients i've worked with for like over the last 30 plus years say well definitely they want to get back together but then every time they do that they find well of course then there's going to be another trigger and, and the closeness, and maybe when things were just a little bit good, right? The person with BP is going to feel engulfed. They're going to be rejecting. They're going to be aloof. They're going to, if they're silent, they're going to withdraw. If they're the internalizing type, if they're the externalizing type, they're going to pick a fight. And you won't know what's going on, and it won't make any sense because they're just trying to get away. And really not from you, but your object other at that point. They're trying to get away from what they feel which is, I've said before, they ascribe to you because they don't understand where it's coming from inside of themselves. It's kind of externalized from self and they don't know who they are. So this idea that you can just do the opposite or taking them back right away or taking them back after relationship breakup after relationship breakup is somehow going to work out the next time around. It's not any more than when they reject you. If you just want to do the opposite and act aloof for threat and abandonment, or say, hey, if you don't do this or talk to me by this amount of time, then I guess, you know, I'll have to, you know, I, I don't want this relationship anymore. Or if you're dating, be like, this is over. And lots of people do these things. And then there's the Hoovers and the reverse Hoovers and the stealth Hoovers and all of that. 
The point being though, there is no way to control what's happening with somebody with BPD. And that's what's really so difficult about it. Because if you think about it, people are trying to enable, I mean, people aren't trying, but people enable people with BPD. People are trying to rescue and fix people, people with BPD. You're trying to get them to be who you thought they were when you fell in love with them or who you would like them to be if it's your adult child or the relationship you would like to have. You're trying to get somebody with BPD to consistently relate to you somehow when that's not possible when they're untreated or in the active throes of BPD. So not enough or significant treatment, which by the way, takes a significant amount of time for people like years to really be able to change the relational patterns that are so maladaptive and defensive in adulthood that help them to survive in childhood. So I see, I see written all over the place these questions in various iterations, but is there anything I can do when the person with BPD is rejecting me? Is there anything I can do when they're like too needy and they don't want me to go to work and they're all clingy and they're on the other side of that split? And it's like, no, not really, because you have to find your self again, your rhythm of self, and to make what is an impossible relational dynamic work, to make it work, to try to force it to work as people do for various periods of time, long periods of time sometimes. But to try to force it to make it work is only going to end up with you suffering a lot more pain and people I uh, swear, just this other thing going on my phone here. People don't realize this or think about it, or maybe you haven't thought about it this way. You might have, you might not have. But so I see these cavalier answers written to questions on just websites by people who might have BPD or might, you know, um, have some other diagnosis or might be the ex of someone with BPD. Well, okay, so they've been through whatever they've been through, but the bottom line is to be advising people that, yeah, you can somehow manipulate, because it's kind of what that is, interfere with, change, or control when a person with borderline, borderline personality is going to be in the idealization or the devaluation, the approach or the avoidance conflict, and it's always back and forth, back and forth, the push, the pull. Uh, no, it's, it's really you losing more of yourself and you fighting harder to try to rescue, save, and change how somebody else feels. Meanwhile, you're not attending to how you feel. You might not even, if you've been through this or if you're going through this now, you might not even realize yet how much this is wounding you and how much you're losing yourself. How much are you m more emotional now, more emotionally reactive than ever before? How much are you just so confused? It's just so painful and it hurts so much. So. When a person with BP is rejecting you, the answer isn't to act aloof and threaten abandonment because could it work? Maybe, but it's, it would be very short lived before the cycle would repeat and it often doesn't work. And what often happens instead of it working and you getting what you desire and then coming closer again is it will just trigger them again and, and their whole cycle will be elongated if in fact they're coming back from that devaluation split of rejecting you because they have an engulfment trigger going on or a myriad of them. And the same is true on the other side, you know, when they want you to be there right then when they want you to be there, because now they're in this fear of abandonment and now you have to be there as a placeholder to reassure that you're not going anywhere when, when actually they just rejected you and maybe ghosted you or whatever they did with that they abandon you in a sense emotionally or relationally even if they stayed in the same house with you but they were not available to you or for you it was all about them so it's really important not to get into trying to change where they're at and yes it's a roller coaster ride it is so painful people are so confused then you start having fear and you feel obligation and you feel guilty, the fog of it all. And yet for people out there online, they uh, use discernment, please. They're out there saying, oh yeah, you know, if they're rejecting you and, and so it's the avoidance then, you know, and it's the engulfment struggle. They don't talk about it in all these words, of course, but they just essentially say, yeah, well just, 
you know, threat abandonment or just tell them you're not going to be there for them anymore. And then they'll come running back to you. Well, it doesn't always work that way. And, and specifically after the kind of devaluation splits and the elongated nature of them as they continually happen in a crew, uh, that's where you see a lot of people that ghost, leave relationships, or maybe some people still are leaving the person with BPD, but you might not want to. So the bottom line is you have to take care of yourself in these times. Really important to gather information. And if you're watching this video, maybe that's what you're doing right now. There's a real helpless feeling when you're with somebody in the active throes of BPD. When one minute it's devaluation, next time it's idealization, it's, it's the pull, it's the push, it's the approach, it's the avoidance, conflict. The best you can do is take care of yourself in, in all of that back and forth and around and around and around, cycling, cyc cycling, sorry. And then you need to be able to try to talk to them about what you're experiencing, but not necessarily saying, well, you have BP, you got to get therapy and all that, because that backfires more often than not. But this happens for mothers with adult children with BPD, the same cycling, the same kind of wanting to maybe do something to get them to get out of a certain cycle. You're trying to control somebody who is, you know, emotionally extremely out of control and who doesn't know themselves. And the second you do that, and the second they feel that, it's going to massively trigger them again. And so the answer is, if you're being rejected or if they're too needy on the other hand, and they're demanding too much that way, there isn't anything you can do to satiate or change whichever part of the cycles, you know, devaluation, idealization, they're in. <clears throat> and I think, you know, I've heard people say that for the time that they were in a relationship with somebody with BPD, that the person would always pick a fight on a Friday and then go away for the weekend and no contact kind of thing, just be doing their own thing or taking care of their emotions or whatever they were feeling. And then... By Sunday night, late Sunday night, they're asking a person not to go to work or to come over then or to come over the next day if they can, maybe if you work later in the day or a different shift or something. And so neither of those being rejected and them ghosting you, whether that's temporary, permanent, like seemingly permanent as in relationship breakup or not, these are the cycles and this is what happens. And so it's best to start to try to radically accept that if you're still trying to hang in to see if there's a way to have this change. But really the only way it can ever change is if the person with BPD gets into treatment and really engages effective and skilled treatment over many, many years. And this often doesn't happen in any time frame to save a relationship, whether they go to therapy or not. And then there's people on the other side of those with BPD, more often than not with codependency, maybe some other issues in their lives too, challenges, that it's your not wanting to look at your own self, your, your, the self that you're losing, the pain that you're in, so that you can begin to make sense out of it all. Because there's that in-between time for people which can last weeks, months, years, or more where people just don't know whether they're coming or going anymore either. But just know the only person that you can control and that you are ultimately responsible for when they're an adult, unlike a child, it really truly is yourself. And that might sound like, ooh, that's an uber selfish thing to say or if people felt that way or you pursue that for yourself, you're being selfish. No. You need to tend to your own woundedness. You need to take care of yourself. And these relationships so often are not going to work out. And people hanging in there to try to make the unworkable work is just more devastating. And then it also increases your recovery process afterwards. So there isn't any easy fix answer for how to get a person with borderline personality to stop rejecting you or to stop pursuing you at when you have to work. You have other things you need to do. You can't always be available or when they're in their learned helplessness. But it can feel so powerless and so helpless and you can feel so much discomfort to pain, 
So if you're avoiding your pain, just so much anxiety, just it really leaves people unable to concentrate on themselves in their own life, on their jobs. So the answer to if you can do something about a person with BPD that you're in a relationship with or any relationship type that has, you know, devalued you and is rejecting you right now to get them to come back, no. And then when they're coming back harder than ever on the other side of that cycle, which isn't always re-idealization, but it's when the fear of aban the distance creates the fear of abandonment, then they think you abandoned them, but they're the ones that took the distance and rejected you. But there isn't any way to manage their cycles. Guess what? They have to learn how to do that in therapy so that they can not only manage the cycles, but not continue to have the cycles. So I hope that was helpful. And it's not what people want to hear, but it is keeping it real, the truth of the situation. And if you are an ex right now and you wonder, could you, you know, or should have you just done this or that? No, because long term, you know, BPD really becomes in adulthood from what it is in childhood and all that it is really becomes a relational disorder and relationships aren't going to work out until unless they get a lot of treatment, which takes a lot of time. So hopefully that was helpful for you. Might not be what you want to hear, but there are no simple answers. And remember, you just can't control anyone else. You can only control yourself. And lots of people in these relationships with codependency, etc., don't feel very in control of their own emotions with all this up and down and back and forth and splitting and the cycles. And of course not. But that's what you need to tend to first and foremostly. Take care.